G'day, episode 314, Aussie Techhead's first day of November 2012. I hope this is finding you well and dandy and uh, making lots of money through the week. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. So how are we all? Aussie Techheads brought to you by Aussie Techheads Hosting. If you go to aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting, there's some great plans there. Cheap plans at the moment. They're all discounted to get it all up and running. And look, I'll let you in a little secret. Probably going to stay that way, but uh, but get in there while they <laughs> before they all run out. Um, yeah, what and uh, domains? Get your domains. AussieTechheads.com.au forward slash hosting, or just go to the landing page on the AussieTechheads.com.au landing page. And all the show notes. Look, people have asked me actually about gas thing. Going, oh, you know, we don't want to go fast forward all through the show. I tell you, I oh, know, I don't. I tell you, it's every couple of weeks, but you can get gas iOS reviews on YouTube uh, or off the uh, web page, just in their individual little. F- uh, video. You don't have to keep going through the whole the whole show to get them. But that's that's how we roll here in the Shire. Let's get the guys on board. <laughs> Eric and Shane, <laughs> how are you guys going? Uh-huh. Oh, Eric, Eric's dropped out. <laughs> that's how he rolls in the Shire. How are you going, Shane? Yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing well, man. That's good. And uh, what's been, anything exciting happened to you this week? Have you updated to Windows 8 or, or what's happening? Uh, no, my um, desktop has um, crapped itself again, mm. so I'm using the, the work laptop, which um, every time I use the laptop, it actually seems to perform a bit better, to be honest. Oh, right. Because um, you had issues with your laptop. Uh, no, your desktop. Have they been resolved? No. No, it's still actually at the shop. Um, I rang the guy yesterday, and he hadn't had a chance to look at it. Um, Depending on what figures he throws at me, I might just bite the bullet and just get it upgraded and put, you know, like an i7 and all that kind of crap in it. Right, yeah, that could be a good idea. That could be a good go. Now, um, now, what else was I going to say to you? Nothing, I don't think. I'm just here trying to... I'm hearing a little buzzing in my ear. Are you hearing that buzzing? No, no, but um, obviously using the laptop, the sound could be a little bit out, but I mean, we right. spent the last half hour trying to muck around with that. That's all right. We'll we'll push on. We'll we'll, we'll get going. Um, oh, here comes Eric. Let's 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 tune into Eric and see what he's up to. What happened, Eric? Eric, hello. He's got hello, this. hello. Oh, here he hello. is. <laughs> oh no, it just went. Everything just went. I couldn't hear you. You just you just crapped out, and then then you oh just oh, those days. <laughs> oh no, tell me about it. I didn't touch anything. I'm just sitting here. Yeah. Didn't do anything, and it just went. Can you just turn yourself down a little bit now, please? You just come through a back, bit back loud, a bit loud. All right, how's that? Sam? Oh, good. Now that that was a quite a professional start to the show, wasn't it? That's good. Oh that's, God, <laughs> that's good. Oh well. Ooh, all right. Sorry so, about that. That's all right. Now, um, Sandy played havoc, and uh, as there was no tech webcast tonight. But uh, it's something I couldn't upload it, so probably that some up import server over there, over in the US, had drowned or something. But anyway. Oh uh, uh, well, if that's the reason you've been given, up to you to believe it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so techwebcast.info. If you want to go check out another Aussie podcast, uh, those guys do a lot of interviews, which is good. Good, good change of pace, if you know what I mean. Now, also, we've got the, the Lounge. The Lounge are with us once again every Thursday night. So cheers, Lounge. I know it gets late for those guys in the southern states. It's uh, an 8.30 start, isn't it? 8.30 start. But um, nevertheless, we're, we're here every Thursday night. Rain, hail or shine, we are here. Now, you might be wondering, Will, there's no Will tonight. He said he was uh, going to come in if he can. So uh, he's on his way home. He got a job about... I don't know, three hours away from where he lives or something, but he's on his way home. Holy, uh, holy. I oh know, selling batteries three hours away. Jeez. Keen. Can't you just email him the battery? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, transport them. And um, so he sent me in a story to talk about, so we'll have a uh, talk about the story that took Will's fancies this uh, this week as well. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, if you want to join us live, it's aussietechheads.com.au forward slash live. Just go to the, the landing page. There's uh, the radio, 24-7 radio through the Shoutcast server. There's paper, uh, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash paper. You know the deal. You know the drum. And uh, tonight we're going to have another review from Garth, if I can get it right. We have another review. And, yeah, let's get cracking. I think we need to get cracking. Um, where are we going to start? How about... Crack a Are you going to start? No, that was just a Tourette's you moment. You can start if you want. All right, go, Shane. First story. Woo. Um, oh, all right, I'm not used to kicking off the show. What can we start with? Oh, just your first one in the 
in your list. In the list? Yeah. All right. Smartphones. But who looks dumb now? All right. So I stumbled across a story where it says social analyst Mark McCrindle yesterday, which is a few days ago now, uh, said, re- uh, said research which he would publish next month showed a reliance on smartphones in our daily lives meant that uh, we were increasingly taking over our private time. Basically, the story goes on to um, throw a lot of stats at you about how um, you know, work, and I'm, I'm one of them, gives you like hmm. a smartphone and a laptop. Um, tablet, and then you, you and just interrupt it every five minutes at home. Exactly. I mean, and I mean the, the stats that it like, throws at you is like as many people as like was. Uh, have their smartphones. Mm. Um, first thing they do in the morning is they check email and all that kind of stuff. The last thing they do at night is check and respond to email and Twitter and all the rest of it. Um, you know what I do Twitter last thing at night? I have a little game of solitaire before bed. Yeah? Yeah, a little right. game of solitaire. <laughs> I check Facebook and Twitter. I don't check emails. Yeah, no, emails are mornings. Uh, look, I've really got a, I've really segregated my timing with emails and Facebook for that matter. And I try and just leave it so, you know, half hour in the morning, deal with the emails and then close it and then come back to it a little bit later on, maybe, you know, one in the afternoon. Because if you leave, I find if I leave my email open, you're always responding to the latest email that pops through. And it's just a time waster. You've got to be focused on what you're doing, not checking emails every two seconds. Yeah, well, look, I leave my email open. Um, mainly because sometimes I get something that's extremely urgent that I can charge an absolute fortune for. Right, so well, that's good. In that but if case. it's not urgent, then I just leave it. Yeah. I, just, I respond to them when I'm finished doing what I'm doing. Yeah, well, that's fair enough. But I've just found that uh, for me, uh, that, that work, I've got to close it. Otherwise, it just keeps popping up. And even if it's just stuff that, to delete, you know, it, it's there. And you think, well, it's only going to take two seconds to delete it. But then your focus is taken away from what you're yeah. actually doing. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so the, I, I did see that story as well. So there's a, the actual story from Will this week. He is, um, uh, he's got a story about a mobile phone. But we'll get to that later because we were hoping that he might come in and he'll be able to, uh, to, to, you know, tell you the story himself. But anyway, let's, uh, I've, got a, I've got a story. How about Microsoft sued again over Windows 8? Oh, uh, no. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, first of all, it was the tiles. Remember they got sued because the Metro. You know, the, the yes. Metro, they, they weren't allowed to use Metro because there was a supermarket in Germany that was called it's Metro. Metro AG. Yes. So I don't know what the hell was going on there. Uh, I thought software and operating systems were quite different to... Um, supermarkets. Supermarkets, yes. But anyway, uh, this time we Windows 8 has been sued because of their tiles. So the t- as you can see uh, in my background, that's the tiles, the Windows 8 tiles. So this company called Surfcast, Surfcast CEO Ovid Santoro said in a statement, we developed the concept of tiles in the 1900s. Uh, in the 1900s. 19, 1990s. Jeez, I tell you, they're very clever. <laughs> I know, that was a long time ago. That was, well, what have been before Babbage's time. But Jeez, anyway. Back to the future. <laughs> in the 1990s. But even there, yeah, 1990s. And it was ahead of his time. Microsoft's live tiles are the centerpiece of Microsoft's new operating system and are covered by our patent. The patent. Now, if you want to have a look at a patent, you can. Go to aussietechers.com.au forward slash. Uh, no, you can't. Just go, go to the webpage. There's no forward slash. Go to the webpage. Look in the show notes. And uh, there's a link to the PDF of the patent. So have a That's look at the. It's lodged by Surfcast, not by Microsoft. That's right. That's right. So it's, it's, um, the numbers are all there. And it was filed in the year 2000. It was issued in February 2004. So now look, I've got a little thing here. This is the, a photo or an image of what they Oh, they've... God, I tell you what. They're gone. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> they're gone. But, I mean, but is it really what, what I'm getting at? Because, well, see, what, what Microsoft have done, they've taken this concept and they've made it look a little bit better, right? But the, con- the fundamentals is the same because Microsoft have got um, stock, stock records, they've got news reports, they've got eBay or something similar, they've got news papers, like this guy's got Wall, Wall Street Journal. Um, mm-hmm. You can access, you know, all these other things, but this is obviously 90s-based <clears throat> technology that you're accessing here. Now, but Microsoft looks like they've lifted this completely. Well, apparently then that, that Microsoft also lodged a patent um, earlier, a few years ago, which referenced 
the the surf cast patent. So it was already referenced. So they knew about it. And so now this is why I think this surf cast is jumping up and down. But my other point of my, uh, of objection, maybe, if you want to put it like that, is if I'm, you know, is that... Oh, you're going you're gonna to be Microsoft biased, are you? Oh, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll argue the point for them in this occasion. Mm-hmm. Well, right now, just because I want to I want to ask a question, you know, so I'll, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll put my, my objective view across, which would be... Uh, now this 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 patent was lodged back in nineteen or well, issued in two thousand and four. Now the, the tiles haven't evolved through Surfcast, and as a matter of fact, this Surfcast business, this company, it's pretty it's 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 not really operating. It's nothing's really going on. It's just it doesn't matter. They own the they own the technology. But how long does a like, well, sitting in a garage? Well, how long? But a, a trademark you you can oppose for a, a non-use. So yeah, but is, the patents are different. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you can, but 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 also like it, it displaying something on a screen in boxes is is that really patentable? Like why? It is. It's the underlying technology that they're patenting. The fact that you're able to display it in a certain fashion, and it's the underlying technology that allows you to do that. And Microsoft have lifted it. And mm. the, my question is, does Microsoft ever invent anything themselves? Seriously, yeah. they stole. They stole my Mac OS from <laughs> Apple when they when they invented Windows three point one or three three point zero. Didn't <clears throat> Apple steal the technology from Xerox? No, fully licensed. No, Re- Xerox gave it to them. No, was it the that the mouse technology you mean and the what it, that all that was open source, wasn't it? Well, well, not open source, but it was all out in the public domain. Public domain. Um, I think it was, it was not a, patent. It wasn't a patent. What Microsoft? What Apple did? Um, going on memory here is that they saw the operating system in a drop down menus at Xerox and also the mouse technology at Xerox Park in you know, 1970 whatever it was and what they and they weren't using it they didn't want it they said to Apple yeah whatever and that's it and then they prettied it up and they made it better yep yep and yeah and then Apple and then Microsoft just stole it Strict, mm. Just oh, look, straight out lifted it. Well, it's not without any permission. Well, At least Apple were talking to Xerox at the time. I don't know if stole is probably the right word, but look, I'm sure like, if you want to do your it, copied, be, used, copied. <laughs> well, used. so did Apple. Same copied. thing. It says that Microsoft got there to the, I think, to the market. Well, not to the market, but made it popular first. But look, it'd be all on. You know, there's, there'd be documentation all over the joint about that if you're interested in following that up. But um, but, well, but it's, in, it's in the it's in the Steve Jobs book. Mm, yeah, yeah well, that, right, yeah, that. might argue that that's not an objective view, but so you might want to look up other other sources. Mm. Look, I've just um, d- I've just done a course, and this was mentioned in the course, and it, w- it was, uh, and from what I can remember, it was only like a couple of months ago when I read it, but it was more uh, a public a public uh, code or public item. It wasn't it wasn't patented to Xerox or whatever. They've they've allowed its use for development and and growth or whatever. Yeah, I, I think, though, Apple wouldn't have cared if, for example, Microsoft went to Xerox and went, oh, that's nice, we'll take that and make it our own, just mm. like Apple did. We'll take it and make it our own. What I, Apple didn't like at the time is um, Apple went and took it, made it their own, and then Windows came on top and said, oh, we'll just take Apple's. Mm. Instead of going to Xerox themselves and doing something different with the Xerox stuff, they went and great, went straight to Apple. Apple did all the all the hard yards, and they just went, oh, we'll copy that. We'll have the drop-down menus. We'll do this, and we'll do that. I think that's the argument, that they didn't actually do any of the work themselves. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't they've know. Done <laughs> they've done it again. <laughs> they've done it again. They've done it again. They've ripped off someone else. But anyway, but wouldn't you? Is it that they've got that much money they don't care? They'll just pay them out somehow? You know, they'll just give them, oh, let, we'll just give you a billion bucks. And a billion? I'd be, I'd, I'd be asking for license fees. For every single one sold, I get a cut for the rest of my freaking life. Mm. And make it retrospective. Yes, mm. down to uh, well, when, whenever Windows 8 was first released, whenever that was, mm. and ongoing mm. until the day that they stop supporting Windows 8, which could be 10 years down the track. <laughs> but, but I don't know. Like, geez, well, well yeah. oh, come on, mate. If you well, invented something and someone just took it, you'd be furious. Yeah, you I, would. You'd be yeah. freaking furious. Yeah, of course you would be. A patent isn't cheap. Mm. Mm. It costs I, you a few thousand dollars to lodge a patent and get it approved. You know, because mm. there's legal fees involved. Mm. There's engineering costs. There's drawings. There's oh, actual just, development of the system. 
Then there's the lodgement fees. You could be up for twenty grand. Go and have a look. I urge anyone to go and have a look at that PDF in the show notes. It's like it is massive, a massive document, and it's um yeah references. It takes a long time yeah. and a lot of work. Mm. Yeah, you, to, you're to get right. a patent done. But but looking from the outside, if you, if you mortgaged your house and said, "Hey Kim, I'm going to borrow fifty grand because I've got this rip snort of an idea, and it's going to belong to us, and I'm going to develop it," and and she said, "Yeah, cool, no worries." And you went and did it fifty thousand dollars later, and you sat on it for a while because something happened. You know, your kids were growing up. You want to spend a bit of time with them. And you go right. I'm going to redo this now. I've had a couple of years off. Go back there and go. Oh, sorry, Windows. It's now Windows Goodman. <laughs> They've nicked it. But but back then you'd be furious. Well, of course you would be. But looking from the outside in, and that, and you know, at, at more than arm's length from the actual situation. Um, I don't know. All I see is that it's a couple of it's graphics on a screen, and back in the day when that pattern was done, it probably wasn't really possible. The computing power of the machine probably wasn't even possible. So now it's not the point. Doesn't matter. Mm. Okay. Doesn't matter. All right. Some of the patents that Apple have got, you know, what going way back when they knew they would never develop it until the um, computing power was available. Wasn't it just through the week? Did I read that the Apple have offered? Um, Motorola a dollar per handset or something for some patent infringement that they've just they've just gone through. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't read that. Mm. All right. Well, I see. Uh, we've, we'll go through. Uh, well, I see you got an Apple story there, Eric. What do you What do you got there? What have I got? I have Old got Scotty, Mr. Forstall, Scotty, Scotty, mm. crazy eyes. <laughs> What's he, has he got crazy eyes? <clears throat> oh, he's crazy like this when he's when he's on the on the stage and he's on talking the, about iOS on the juice. He's there going, "Hello, everyone. The maps are the best." <laughs> program in the world oh dear well, so he's a bit crazy well he's uh his maps have cost him his job by the sounds of it yeah so um apparently and i was reading this is a big art i'm not gonna read this whole thing out but apparently it's come out that um he was under he was under the he which got maps and you know things like game center and the notepad and all that so those sort of basically ios was under his control and he gets out on stage at the release of iOS 6 and says, you know, the Maps is the best mapping product ever and all this sort of stuff. What they, he, what he should really say is it's in beta. Um, mm, mm. Siri was under his control as well. And apparently Tim Cook wanted, did an apology on the Maps because, you know, sorry, we don't like letting our customers down. It's not Apple's form to do that, blah, 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 blah. And he wanted Scott Forstall to sign it. And yep. he refused to sign it. Yep. Refused to sign it. Because he's, apparently he's a bit of an ego. And well, he was apparently he was Jobsy's boy. Mm, yeah, yeah. And uh, he was making a lot of power plays in there, and he was very he was he was highly unliked. After Jobs left, he was unliked, and Jonathan Ive wouldn't go into a meeting with him. Apparently, yeah, right, right. Ever D- didn't want to meet be in the same room as him. Um, so in the end, he didn't put his name to the apology, so they sacked him because it's his responsibility. That's mm. what you got to do when you when you screw up. You got to. Take responsibility for it. He refused to take responsibility for it. Now I would have, I would have sacked him as well. He was, he'd been working on this, this Apple Maps for six years or something. But um, yeah, but, well, you know, well done. But look, look, as far as I can see, you know, like, do you think? Would you agree that things may have slipped a bit since Jobs has gone? Like, because you've got the Maps, yeah, which has, is a failure. But that, I think that will change. That will change now because I think a lot of the reason it was slipping is because of this gentleman. He's mm. bringing out substandard, substandard stuff. And never taking responsibility for it, you know. Even Steve Jobs apologised when they had the antenna gate thing. Even he mm. came out and said, "Oh, look, we're really sorry." And reluctantly. Blah, 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 and oh yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> yeah right. reluctantly. But this guy wouldn't even do it. He, he, this guy wouldn't even do it reluctantly. Yeah. But, Nothing. You know that's wrong. Yeah. But, yes. Um, no. I, I, I. Well, see, Jonathan, I've been in, now. He's taken charge of the user interface, the software user interface. So it's going to be a look a lot prettier. Mm. Um. Mm. Because Jonathan Wright's going to have his eye on it, and this guy, you know, he's a shit hot designer. So does it look around the corners? Oh, he loves those round corners. He loves them. Yeah, he does. <laughs> now, um, yeah, because I, I look, I was thinking, I, I looked through the through the a few reviews and that of the iPad Mini and all this sort of stuff, and they're saying, you know, um, it's not selling as well as what they would have hoped it to have sold, and apparently the resolution is not as good, and it, it's, um, you know, the the similar similar tablets in the same uh, class, like the Nexus and all that, the, the you know, the cheaper ones, that they outperform the yeah, iPad. It depends, it depends who wrote it. it. Depends who wrote the article. But it, it's obviously true. Like it was, 
they stayed they stayed at like the the resolution and the, that's a that, that'd be a fact so the resolutions were were lower and stuff and i i just thought just from reading that and coupled with the apple maps and that i just thought well maybe you know they're, they're just punching these products out like jobsy prob, jobsy was against this ipad mini he didn't want it so unless he changed his mind right yeah. at the end but well they had to they had to bring out a 7 inch they had to bring it out because they were losing ground to the 7 inch tablets they had to bring, they had to they had no choice they had to bring out but a, they did the, a cheaper thing, not a, not a the similar price. No, thing. Apple, Apple never compete on price. The minute you do that, you 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 will go down the toilet. There's no way out. Never mm. compete on price. Mm. Yeah, never. but in this case, they've never they haven't competed on quality either. I mean, they put the Retina display on the bigger one, whereas it would have been easier to put it on the smaller one. I th- you know what I thought the Retina display was on the previous iPad, the iPad three. Yes, is that true? Yes, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, was it? Yes. And it's on the iPad yeah. 4 as well. So yes. what's the difference? Just a better CPU, I think. Okay, just a faster processor. Yeah. Look, yeah. it would have been nice to have the retina display, but I think their argument was and because it's a smaller screen, uh, the 1280 or whatever it is they've got on there should be sufficient. But you know what Apple's like? They could have put a retina screen on an iPad 1. I mean, let's face it. Right? Yeah. But they didn't. Yeah. Because otherwise... You won't be able to sell next year's product with an upgraded screen mm. and, and better camera. That's just that's a marketing thing. That's not a technology. Um, that's not a technology um, deficiency. That's a that's a marketing ploy. Mm. Yeah, but which I'm not saying I agree with. But what what was um, um, what was uh, Tim Cook's response to the Windows? That was a bit of a uh, a bit of a, a toss away remark, wasn't it? So I don't know. I just think that. They could be a little bit scared. He said of. it was confusing. He said it was confusing. But he's probably never picked up a I Windows. I, I can't understand <laughs> that comment. Um, you know, I'm not a Windows 8 fan, but I can't understand why he would say it's confusing. He's probably I never. Think it's fairly simple. Yeah, he's probably never used a Windows machine in his life. So going to possibly. use possibly. Yeah, but anyway, anyway, let's not get into that little um, mess. But um, Scott wasn't the only person to to leave Apple. Yeah, the re- um, the retail guy went. Yeah, the guy the head of retail stores. Yeah, okay. He shouldn't have been. He shouldn't have been hired in the first place. Mm. Is that yeah right? So so there's a there's a mess. I, I read that there was a bit of a shake up. So there's obviously things going on. Yeah, over a couple there. of them. Yeah. But don't feel too for, sorry for Scott Forstall, because six months ago he sold some of his some of his shares, and you can it's public record, some of his shares, and um, netted three hundred million. So don't feel too sorry for him. That's a lot of money, isn't it? That's a lot of money. Um, all right, so getting on to something a bit, uh, oh, a bit, bit off that track now, a bit crazier. Um, Brisbane and Service Paradise Optus have uh, uh, is, is turning on the four G up in here, up Brisbane and Service Paradise early in September. Good luck with that. <laughs> early in September, <laughs> early in September, Optus turned on consumer four G services in Sydney, Perth, and Newcastle. The four G network has been available to Optus Optus businesses customers since July, and yesterday they announced four sites in Surface Paradise had been switched on, with five more in Brisbane CBD to be launched next week ahead of a wider rollout in December and January. More Surface Paradise sites will all but also be turned on in December. Currently, Optus 4G coverage in Sydney runs from Bondi to blah, blah, blah. And Perth coverage extends from the city's airport to the east to the city beach. So there you go. In Melbourne, the network runs across Blackburn and St Albans. So Optus is going crazy. They're turning their 4G on. And Qantas have got free members' Wi-Fi in their lounge. But they've always had that. Have they? Yeah. Well, look, yeah. The, the service is available at domestic... I don't know what they're going on about. I read that and I thought, what? They've always had that. I've for... never had to pay for Wi-Fi in a Qantas lounge, ever. Maybe you were you were sourcing Virgin's Wi-Fi instead, thinking it was Qantas. No, but you still need it. They, still give, they give you a password at the desk when you check in. So the service is available at domestic and international terminals in Adelaide, Brisbane, Canberra, Darwin, Hobart, Melbourne, Perth and Sydney. Regional areas uh, also, Alice Springs, Broome, Coffs Harbour, Cairns. So maybe it's more regional, regionalised. So I don't know. But anyway. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Anyway. Um, all right. Look, I've got another little, I've got a couple more little Microsoft stories. But do you want to do something else before? Oh, before? you've got a thousand Microsoft stories. You've gone no, nuts. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I've got a couple. Okay, you've done I... one. Yeah, there's two, three, <laughs> Did four, <you>? five. <laughs> Did you, have you got a story? That's why I said you wanted to go on to something else before I do another Microsoft story. 
Well, let's I might talk about be something. Go on, you go, Shane. I was going to say, I might do something that's a little bit related to um, to the Qantas Microsoft. thing. Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, well, do an Android related. story. Where are they? <laughs> Where's Will? Um, <laughs> I, left it, I left him out because I thought, oh, Will will be around. Anyway, I stumbled across a story on the BBC. Actually, I didn't stumble across it. My boss stumbled across it and he sort of said, here, Shane, do this in your podcast. Um, a Get him on, we'll punch him out. <laughs> Uh, he stumbled across a story on the BBC web, BBC website where it is um, apparent that boarding passes and barcodes can be read by smartphone uh, barcode readers. And you kind of think, well, what's the big deal with that? Um, because all you find out is you know, your flight details and where you're going to sit. But apparently there's extra information on these um, in these barcodes where um, they flag you on being sort of subject to extra scrutiny. So... Potentially, yeah, you, know, you could know ahead of time that you know you're going to be, you know, taken bag through searched. a bag search, and you got to take your shoes off and all that kind of stuff. That's what happened to you, um, Eric. Oh, more than once. They, they had your barcode. They had, they had your number before you even got there. Virgin yeah, or whatever well, it was. Went, didn't they? You had a bit of a hassle with Virgin or something. Oh, that was like that was the, um, earlier this year when I was coming up to Brisbane. Remember? Yeah, yeah, and something happened, and. Um, yeah, oh, they wouldn't yeah. let you on or something. Yeah, I yeah. smashed her in the face. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So, sorry, Shane. Was keep going with that one. That, that's right. Um, it basically just goes on to say that the information's there. It's not encrypted in any way. Um, the main problem with that is that um, obviously, you know, baddies can kind of know ahead of time that they're going to be searched and all that kind of stuff, so they can kind of. Dodge it if they if they need to. Um, it does. Another interesting thing goes on to it goes on to say that for a hundred dollars you can um, pay to kind of get checked and 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 be clean, and then not bothered for five years. Yeah, right. It's what? Not, kind of like. Well, you're a, bribing the bribing the authorities legally. Uh, it's like a police clearance kind of thing. You could have pay a hundred dollars. They do this. Oh yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, get your police report. Check. You. Yeah. And but yeah, a police clearance is only good for what a year or something at the most, whereas this thing's good yeah, for five years. Yeah, twelve months. Yeah. yeah. So this is a, a vulnerability okay. in the US domestic airline boarding pass. Um, I believe it is only um, with them, probably because they're the only ones that do as much screening and. and so the like codes, as... the codes reveal what kind of airport checks a passenger will face. So is that is that saying that okay? So anyone with a barcode starting with nine, then that they'll they'll be in the box A and starting with eight will be in the box B and so forth. Is that is that how I sort of read it? Because otherwise, yeah, pretty much. Well, why would they why would they even uh, categorise the the barcodes if you know what I mean? Like, why not just just random, just sequential incrementing sequential barcoding, and then it just meant that just went off by itself to what it just pointed to whatever. I don't know. Maybe that's what they'll move to. <laughs> maybe, maybe. So uh, I know they listen to the U.S. Uh, domestic airline service, so get a grip. <laughs> yes, you do that. <laughs> get a grip. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to find the um, the Telstra 4G rollout map, you know, like not the coverage map, mm. tells, you know, because that's useless to me. Yeah. I, I know that I'm not covered right now, but the rollout, you know, what's the next one? You know, like the NBN's got the rollout map, which doesn't move <laughs> from week to week, but... <laughs> Uh, I wonder if I was just wondering if Telstra had one. I don't know about a rollout. Uh, why did you want? What, so you, what before? So you haven't got LTE. So we're going to say, well, we're going to hit this area by this date and this area by that date. And so you, you haven't know, got four G where you are. Not at the moment, no. Mm. Um, I haven't got four G where I am, but two streets in every direction has got four G coverage. What's strong? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? What's strong? So it's like it's almost. It, I mean, I've got coverage, but it's like it's that. Kind of the lighter color. It's not the full blown, you know, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. 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 Gasm, well, kind of like stuff. if you went in the middle of the street, you'd get the full blown mm. blue. Well, how's um, yeah. well, how's Mark? I don't know if if you remember a couple of weeks ago, if you looked on the Aussie Tech Ed's Facebook page, you would have seen it. But Mark was um, uh, posting up some speed test dot nets he's done in Surface, which Optus has just turned on. But this is through Telstra, and I think the best one that he got was something like sixty meg down, and, and uh, I think he had about fifty up. Oh, that's insane. That's, 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 yeah. that's insane. I, yeah, the best I've got is 53 down and 29 up. Yeah, and he's got 60 mm. down. Like that's, um, 
And I suppose when you look back at it, and that's what I suppose the coalition was saying that they wanted to bring like these fast speeds, but more of a to a wireless technology. Back when yeah, they but were... see, if everyone was on wireless, could you imagine how clogged it'd be? But maybe they just increased. I, dis- the... see, I disagree with that. No, but they they disagree. In- but they'd increase the 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 infrastructure. Because we're only like you got to sit. End up costing the same. I reckon it end up costing the same. Yeah, I don't know. It may. It may. Have. If there's a storm, if there's a storm, the mobile towers are the first to go. Yeah, look, I'm happy with the fibre optic. If I can get fibre to the house, I'm ha- I'm, well, I'm, I'm I'm done. Blown away yeah. with that. That's good. I think yeah. that will last into the future and well into the future. I don't think because what was it? The, it's not just one. Oh, the, look, look, the opposition. You know, no one. There's no secret that I vote liberal, um, but the opposition keeps saying incorrectly that you know it'll be obsolete before it's even built that's wrong it's not it won't mm, be mm, mm. because each that that fiber optic stuff now it, it obviously does it by light so they send a stream of light down that that cable now on each strand but see of, that cable has got a thousand strands and mm. each strand can 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 do one gigabit per second yeah and they've throttled it to 100 but plus but plus, it's not only so they're sending a white light. They can send a yellow and a blue light, and and they can actually then they can replicate the same speeds on the different light, so the different frequency yeah, that's right. on the same cable. That's what I mean. That's why it won't be obsolete. Mm. And each of these cables have got thousands and thousands of cables within within that one cable. Mm. I mean, this thing will last. You know, when we've got a hundred million people living here. Mm. Yeah, it, it'll yeah. it'll go so, all right. But that's typical politics, right? They yeah. Unfortunately, they have to say that. Because everyone knows that the rollout is so badly managed, and everyone, no one is against the NBN, but everyone is against this government actually handling the rollout. Mm. That's or, it. Yes, but anyway, on, on to something more more lighter and and more positive. Microsoft <laughs> has claimed. Oh <laughs> God! Four million Windows eight upgrades so far. Steve Liar. Steve Bormas <laughs> said. The company had sold 4 million upgrades to Windows 8, signalling a strong start for new operating system. Barmer said on Monday that Windows 8 was outselling the previous version, Windows 7, at the same stage after the launch three years ago. We're seeing a preliminary, preliminary demand well above where we were with Windows 7, he said. Uh, Windows 7 is the best-selling version of Windows so far, selling more than 670 million licences in three years since 2009. So Microsoft has very high expectations when it comes to the new operating system. It expects to see around 400 million Windows 8 devices in less than nine months. Is that is that dreaming? Yeah, I was gonna say, is he... less people than Facebook customers though. So 400 million. Yes. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Be very careful making claims like that, just in case. Well, yeah, well. And also uh, Windows, uh, these are little fast ones, Eric, so don't, don't stress. Windows Phone, <laughs> Windows Phone launches in Australia. I've got an Android story next, too. Follow, oh, no. <laughs> That's probably a bad one, eh? Oh, <laughs> no, no, it's not, a, it's not a bad one. Not, don't, don't, you know, no need to hang on to your seats here. It's not a bad one. Following the global launch of the mobile version of Windows 8 operating system this morning, w- w- or Windows, was it this, today? I don't know. After no, it's Monday, I think. Monday was yeah. I was, was going to say it was earlier this week. Uh, Windows <laughs> Phone Eight, Microsoft OEM partners have announced local pricing for handsets running the operating system smartphones. Nokia, Samsung, and HTC hit the market from November, so that's coming out. And uh, oh, we go into this one. Oh, we might as well. Windows Eight for resellers. Now this one is a bit bit confusing with all these versions of Windows coming out, Windows 8. So according to its licensing guide, distributed to resellers, and now this was cited by one of the online uh, magazines, CRN, a new companion license has been introduced to allow users to access their corporate desktops on a mobile device. So this is a good, a good little plan. The Windows RT companion subscription license provides a single license for up to four devices. So rather than individual license for each companion device, meaning workers who want to bring more than one tablet or smartphone to work are able to do so uh, for lower cost to the organisation. So, so you're with me so far? So, well, it's yeah. a remote desktop session. No, well, you could do that as well. But no, that they're, they're going to license uh, a copy of Windows on your, on your BYOD device. 
So, okay. so that this is what they call the companion subscription license. So it provides one single license for up to four devices. So that's good. There is a bit of a catch, I think. Well, the catch that being that you have to have, and I don't know if I got this in here, for the Windows RT device to be enabled, the user's PC needs to be licensed with Microsoft Software Assurance. So you have to have your licensed machine at work, and then you can have up to four devices, four mobile devices by the sounds of it. Uh, it's Microsoft's push into the BYOD trend, looking to counter the advancement of iOS and Android products into the workplace by offering an extension of Windows on PC across all devices. So that's a good idea, I think. So they're trying to convince people to all in one, basically. Yeah. So get a Windows phone and do this, and it's not going to work. No one's going to get a Windows. A bit late to the game. Everyone, every time I walk down the street, everyone's got an iPhone. Yeah, well, well, that that's the thing. Like Apple has certainly got. Well, so have I. Look, I've got an iPhone. I love it. I've got an yep. iPad. I love it. I'll tell you, the iPhone, yep. the iPad yep. doesn't get as used as much now. I'm always on the iPhone. But um, no, you have to get yourself an iPad Mini now. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't want a smaller one. Eh? I'm with Jobsy. I don't want a smaller one. The iPad is perfect. I don't want it smaller. What do I want? Too smaller? bad. I'm getting one. I've already ordered one. So. Oh, you would have been better off with and the Surface. And then you can't say they're not selling because there's a two-week back order on these suckers. Ah, you, you would have been better off with a Surface. You should have got a oh, Surface. Get real. I saw... No. They're a piece of pus. No, they have look you like seen, shite. Have you seen all the product placements for the Surface? you got the judges on X Factor that are using them. You've got, um, uh, I think, Big Brothers somehow incorporated it. Yeah, right. Oh, well, they'll I'm be not... throwing that. They'll be throwing that out soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah oh, look, Eric, you'll you'll be you'll be bloody. You get the blue blue screen of death. <laughs> look, no, if you... not going to get one. But I don't like the look of them. Um, the software might be okay, a little bit infantile, but it might be okay. But the devices themselves are as boring as batshit. Wow. They're not nice looking de devices. They just not. Yeah, they're all right. Awful looking things. They're, they're all awful, right. mate. They're right. bland. You know, if I buy a Surface, I'll have to buy a brown cardigan. <laughs> all right. All right, now, yeah, now have, you, have you made a complaint to the TIO this year? Not this year. A couple of years ago, <laughs> I did. <laughs> and who was that against? Telstra? Vodafone. Shane, have you ever done a TIO complaint? Hang on for a sec. All right, so Shane just got a phone call by the sound of it. So, so no, I that's net. Right, it was just the missus. Oh, okay. Um, he's got it. that. Yep. Shane, Shane hasn't done complaints. He just got a complaint. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Get off. <laughs> so, yeah, um, now um, I'm, I'm familiar with the TIO and how it kind of works. Everything having worked for Telstra for so long in the mobile mobile customer service area. Um, yeah, so anyway. Are you, still with them? Are you still with them, Shane? From a customer point of view, yeah. I don't work there anymore, yeah. but I'm a yeah, customer of theirs, yeah. You're, yeah, but you're, oh, you don't work there anymore, so you can't help me with my bill, <laughs> which they've screwed up. I can explain it to you, but I can't do it. No, no, I don't, need <laughs> I don't need explanation. I know exactly what happened. So anyway, <laughs> big, big falls in complaints to the TIO. Yes, that's good news. IINet, Telstra, TPG saw the biggest year-on-year -year falls in new customer complaints filed against them, according to statistics released by the TIO. Now, IINet fell 26 0.4% in 2011 12 compared to the f prior financial year. Uh, so that meant that 2000, that meant there were 2,974 new complaints against IINet that the TIO received, and it fell in 2010 2011, fell to 2,188. So that's, that's good. How long? What was the previous one? Uh, the previous one was 2,974. Okay, all right. Fell that's to 2,000. 2000, yep. Uh, Telstra falling from 78,949 <laughs> received in 10 11 to 61,991 uh, in 11 12. 21.5. That, like that sounds like a lot, but when you consider how many customers they've actually got. Well, it's a quarter, you know, 21%. Probably... A fifth. No, no, no. The overall complaints is still. Oh, yeah. You know, as a percentage of their total customers, it's, it's still small. Yes, well, that's right. Bigger, the bigger the company, bigger the numbers. Um, T, right. TPG also saw a substantial drop uh, from 4,000... That's surprising because they're really bad. 4,212 uh, 
in 1011 to 3,443 11-12. That was 18.3%. Um, now, more modest one year on year complaint falls were expected. Dodo, Crazy Johns. And guess who had an increase? Oh, hang on. Optus? Vodafone? New, new complaints about Optus rose 46.9%. <laughs> Yeah, because they're garbage. They're full. I mean, what about Vodafone? They would have been about a th- gazillion percent. Virgin Mobile saw a rise of 33.1% over the same period. Which is period. Um, well, just this Optus. Yeah, they're yes. resellers. Yep, yep. And my, my beef was with Virgin. I had Virgin beef. And um, equivalent to you know, blah, 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 blah. Vodafone, 11.3% increase in new complaints. So everyone's uh, not liking those guys. So hopefully the 4G in Brizzy and Surface might uh, calm some of these guys down. But, um, yeah, 46% increase. That's, that's rubbish, isn't it? Give yourself a pat on the back, Optas. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, we're going to try, try and have another a review from Garth. If this works, <laughs> if this works, if this ever works, dear, oh, dear. All right. So, um, all right. We'll be back, hopefully, after I've, I've pulled the right one out this week. So let's see what Garth's doing this week. Yes, we're back. Garth is here with me again. And uh, Garth, what are you talking about uh, this time? The weather, pocket weather. Always so a good subject. Yeah, no, Shifty Jelly is the... Um, the makers? Oh, the makers, that's the ones. <laughs> Developers, whatever you want to call them. Yep. And... Um, this is probably the best of the um, Australian weather apps, at least as far as I'm concerned. Right. Um, Pocket Weather or Pocket Weather AU, they make a world version as well, I think. Um, the app's been out for quite a while, and just a, oh, a month or two, a couple of months ago now maybe, they released a new version of the app. Yep. Um, so that you had to buy it again, which, as far as I'm concerned, is totally fine, you know. This is an app that they've continually developed over the years. Yep. Um, and... Now it's time to give them a little bit more money so they can keep on continuing developing it. So like we're not when you say uh, uh, they want more money, like we're not talking truckloads. We're talking two dollars. Oh yeah, God, it's going to break the bank. It's a whole dollar ninety nine. Yeah. So, so you know, so how am I going to buy? Yeah. So half people a can had issues with this, did they? Well, there was a little bit of a backlash, as there tends to be when you know mm. when iOS owners are asked to spend money. Sometimes. Is it like is it like when you go from um, leopard to snow leopard and you got to pay again? No, yeah. one, no one likes doing that. No one likes doing no. it, but <laughs> for goodness sake, it's two dollars. Two dollars exactly, and it's a whole redesigned of redesign of the app. Yeah. Um, some fantastic new features in there. Yep. The one thing that I liked about the app that probably I don't know if everyone would, but what I, the reason I liked it is it sends me push notifications, and now that's of course configurable. Anything from what is it, morning, lunch, and night, any combination of whichever ones you like. So it just sends you a push notification of what your weather forecast is going to be. Yep. Um, nice. And for me, that's that's as much interaction as I want with the weather. You know, I don't. I never even open the app hardly. Now tell um, me. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'll just when you're finished, I've got a question. Go for it. I was just going to say now with uh, push notifications. Now tell me if I if I'm wrong, but mm-hmm. and, and you might not even know, but I, I don't seem to get them on my Android phone. Is it something just is it's just peculiar to the iPhone, the iOS, of these the, these things, these push notifications? Um, I doubt it. I'm sure there's got to be an, it has to be an equivalent in in the Android space, doesn't there? I don't get them. Not lo- like they do on the I- iOS devices. Like, yeah, you get the noise, and you might get it something just pop up in the like the toolbar or the task. Well, that's the bar. same thing. But don't you, you get a, a, a isn't a push notification that pops up on the screen in a bit nice big box? It you can have it do that, or you can just have it as a little thing, thing in the in, thing the, in the, top. the top. Yeah, right. And so in the old days, it could only be the big box. Right. Um, but now you can choose what sort of notification you want. I like the big box. Well, yeah, and you can just, you, it's just a setting in, in at the iPhone level. So, um, so for example, for Haytel, when I get a push notification from Haytel, I want to know about it. I want to make sure it, it's on screen and that's I right. can't do anything else until I deal with yeah, that. that's right. But with some things like, for example, the weather, yeah, you maybe you don't really yeah. want a box that you have to interact with every time you get a push notification. Yeah, maybe. So, so you just, yeah, yeah, and you just set the setting as whichever one you want. But anyway, there, there's a free version and there's, a, there's also a paid version? Or, the or free version may, yeah, I haven't looked into that. The free version now may be the older version, which okay. in itself was a fantastic app anyway. 
No, well, this was um, updated, free version updated 10th of August. Okay. Uh, after four years and many updates, Pocket Weather Australia 3 is finally out. You should go and check it out. I, yeah, I don't know what, what There's no in-app the purchases. So go, go, um, go, and, go and check it out before you buy it and um, see if it's free or not. But in any case... Well, there is a free version there, obviously. Yeah. But and in any case, what's the yeah, it's, it's two bucks. It's a really good app. Yep. And the bit down the bottom, what are other people buying? There's no pro version there. So there's Pocket Weather Australia. Oh, there's Pocket Weather AU Lite and and Pocket Weather Australia. Yep, dollar ninety nine. Yeah, well that's the that's the pro one then, yeah, the Pocket Weather Australia. Yeah, so it's probably so just to give you a couple of screenshots here, Pocket Weather Australia. Um yeah, got a couple of a little bit more there. detail. You get hourly weather. Um Oh, and a and a radar. Yeah, there's all the radar. There's all tide information in there. Yeah, um, nice. But for a dollar ninety nine, like, why not? Just yeah. why not? Why yeah. not? Anyway, weather per suburb. Yeah, good stuff. Great. But we but we like it and yeah. go and check it out. And uh, good stuff, Garth. And I, I I wish they continue on with the big box notifications because that's what I like. That's what you like. Well, they will. You just set the setting. Bye bye. That's all right. My, that's obviously an old episode, an, an old uh, recording, because I've no longer got the uh, Android. I'm on fire with the uh, iPhone. Yeah, baby. <laughs> All right. Now, let's let's keep moving on. Where are we up to? Eric, did you have an Android story you were saying? I do. I Just do. Talking of Android. And I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know this happened this week, but um, because, you know, Microsoft and Apple have stolen the news cycle. Um, for a change, Microsoft's actually in there. And... Uh, Helping the Microsoft steal the new cycle is Glenn Goodman. Uh, That's right. His r- rants. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. That's Google good. Google has launched three new devices this week. Did you know this? Three. No. no. They have launched a smartphone, Nexus, what's it called? It's the Nexus, Nexus 4 yep. smartphone made by LG for Google. Comes in 8 gigs for 399 Yeah. and uh, 16 gigs for 499 um, and they and the, but the funny the thing is, it works in the 850, 900, 1700, 1900, 2100 megaband, um, megahertz bands, which is not the Telstra. So right. Telstra is it's not it's Telstra. Telstra. Telstra is eighteen hundred. So I don't know what. Yeah, they're not on. It's they they're on that Telstra three G, which is the eight fifty. Yeah. Um, but not the four G. And I don't know if they'll work. I don't know what bands the others guys are using for four G. Um, so what's so not that's work? that one? Not on Telstra. Yeah, right. <coughs> I don't understand that. The Nexus Ten. Oh, well, you know. What are you going to do? <laughs> you can't win them all. Yeah, you know who cares? You don't know, buy uh, the Nexus. Then they've released the Nexus Ten tablet with the ultra high resolution, which is pretty high. But if this is correct, two five sixty by sixteen hundred pixel display. On sale for four sixty nine for the sixteen gigabyte version and five sixty nine for the thirty two gigabyte mm-hmm. version, and uh, the Nexus Seven tablet, which is the updated version to the model launched earlier this year, but yet to be announced by Google. So have, so, have you got an Android go device in the house? Who me? Yeah. Oh God, no. <laughs> but Shane, you've got a a phone. Is that right? Uh, no, I've got a tablet, tablet, and the young fellas also just bought a tablet. I've got the I've got the first generation Asus um, thing that they I don't know what they called it, and um, and the young fellas just bought himself a an El Cheapo. Um, it's a ten inch. Um, it's probably it's lighter, and overall size is smaller than my ten inch, um, but it's. Um, uh, can't think of the name of it. So I he, want to say it's audio box. So, so by the sounds of it, you, uh, he was obviously price sensitive. That's why he's bought Android. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, would, would yeah. So would he have bought? Say, money's no object. What would he have bought? I think he was probably leaning towards an iPad. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think that's that's Let's where go. I think that's where Apple's going to miss it because what 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 did he pay for his under about two hundred? Yeah. 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 yeah, but see, Glenn, you missed the point, mate. Apple do not compete on price; they never have, and they never will. Well, I think that's a mistake. In this no, instance, no, it's not a mistake. In this but instance, no, I think it disagree. is. Disagree. 
No. Mate, I, 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 I do the same thing. If someone came to me and said, oh, you're too expensive, can you drop your prices? The answer is no. Go somewhere else. No, but, but you're, you're selling an existing service. This is a, this is a, new, a new product. I don't doesn't know. matter. The iPad was a new product too. Yeah, I, I've got, got 90% I'm not, of the market. But I'm not saying that they should drop the price on that. I'm just saying that what, well, <coughs> I think what they needed was a product at, to compete on price. Or around about no. the same price. No, no. It's not, it's not, that's not who they are. If they did mm. that, they just don't, they're not going to do it. Because mm. if you go down in price, you can't go back up. The no. same argument can be made about Telstra, I suppose, because, I mean, Telstra generally are more expensive than everybody else. That's right. But you get what you pay life. for. Yeah. But you get what you pay for. Well, I suppose, well, you, well yeah. You go well, to Vodafone and to Optus and get the, oh, I only want to pay $29 a month. Mm. Well, guess what? You probably only make twenty nine dollars worth of phone calls because nothing will get through. Well, well I th- okay. Well, let me put it this way then. I'm probably my my uh, comment is probably influenced by the fact that I'm not into a smaller iPad. Just not into it. Don't want it. Wouldn't have it. Yeah, look, I understand that. Fair enough. Um, but you can't say that they will sell more if they drop the price because they are their their market segment is completely different. If they do their they do their research and their and their demographic are high income earners with money to burn, and they're not going to go down market. It's just that simple. Mm. Yeah, look, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Well, they've always yeah, yeah you're right. They've always been there. But um, I've got another story here. Siri, this is from Frosty. Frosty sent me this one through the week. Siri stops pimping in China following outcries. I don't know if anyone's um, any of you guys have picked this up, but uh, Siri would direct users to brothels. Or other erotic <laughs> services, <laughs> if you see, ask yeah. the right questions. Despite hang on, let me see. Let <laughs> me check. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Listen, listen. Siri, I need a hooker. No, not that. Hawker. Siri, <laughs> so, I need a prostitute. So again, Eric. From you. you hear that? Yeah. Hang on. Let, let's me try. See if the same thing happens here. Mm-hmm. Hang on. Siri, I need a prostitute. Nothing. I need a prostitute. Nothing. She's she next door. Find any escort <laughs> services. She couldn't find right, any. Hang on. Hang on. Hang well, you're on. no good. Siri, I need a prostitute. I don't understand. She doesn't understand. <laughs> Siri, I need a prostitute. Siri, I need a lady of the night. I found five escorts. Oh, Eric. services. <laughs> There you go. I just asked for a lady of the night and she knew what I was talking about. All right. <laughs> well, you know what you say? Say, you know, you tell her, I need. An escort, a lady of the night in Surface Paradise. Oh, <laughs> come up with the phone will, thousand. The phone will blow up in me hand. Hang on. <laughs> I need an escort in Surface Paradise. Sorry, I don't know where that is. Oh, turn it up. Uh, Surface Paradise she prostitute. Say, Queens, say Gold Coast. Gold Coast, Queensland. Restaurants named Paradise. Ah, she's hopeless. <laughs> anyway, apparently it was all the all the all the rage in China. Now apparently it's it's, it's illegal to uh, uh to for prostitution is illegal in China. So a Mandarin version of Siri was launched just in the summer. The problem is Siri seems to have kept her ear to the ground in China. Apparently she could direct an inquisitive Chinese user user to a brothel or escort service on demand. Woohoo! So anyway, but it stopped. They've they've stopped it. Poor Siri. They've canned it. They've canned it. Now, just on the Siri story, Google has also unveiled unveiled free Siri rival for iPhone. The app, which is available for download right now, opens with a try on new voice search message that sits next to an icon of a microphone. So it looks like it's going to operate the same way as Siri. That looks like a Siri microphone. Oh, it is. They're going to get sued for that. <laughs> what's it called? What's it? What's it called? It's a graphic. What? Yeah, I know. What's it called? What's the app called? Oh, it doesn't say. Now, what? It just says the app, which 
<laughs> it's available for free download. Opens with so it must be. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hang on, we'll go. To the, there's links in the show notes. I didn't copy that part down. I wasn't that. Is it only for the um, 4S and above, or does it work on the four or what? No, this is for the Google. This is Android. This is. Okay. A, no, you uh, said it's uh, released for iPhone yeah, as well. For iPhone and iPad. No rival, or? rival for iPhone uh, and iPad. Uh, I might have. I don't know. It's getting late. What have they called it? Yeah, that's what I don't know. They've already. I thought they already have one because I got it on my tablet. It's called. Um, They've got assistant. Yeah, but I think it's never been that successful. But this obviously is a better one. So I thought. I thought Will was going to be here tonight. He would have been across it. But anyway, the sh- there's links in the show notes if you're interested in that one. Um, okay. Well, who else has got something? Anyone else want to have another s- another go? Go, Eric. What What else have you got oh, in your little well, little? Let's, you, let's go to. Uh, Jobsy super yacht, shall we? Oh yes. Well, that was my last story. Well, it's going to be my la- my <laughs> second last story. <laughs> well, hang on, hang on, hang on, because I've got you talk about it while I do this. Okay, go. <coughs> wow. Super yacht designed by Steve Jobs unveiled a year after his death. Oh, there's the yeah. You will play that. Play that first. Yeah, that's no, just and music to it. You keep talking. Okay. Okay. Um, Jobs, uh, uh, a year after his death, the family of Apple founder Steve Jobs have helped launch the super yacht, the late technocrat designed in the Netherlands. Jobs reportedly spent years designing a 250-foot yacht called Venus, which is steered from the control room or wheelhouse by a group of 27-inch IMAX. Steve Jobs spent years designing blah, blah, blah. Um, and we'll just look at some pictures. And I'll tell you what, it's a... It's not a bad looking. Um, it's a it's a machine. beautiful. It's not a it's not a your it typical is. looking ship. How how clean does it look? How clean does that look? Mm. Beautiful clean lines. Yep, just like no the rounded apple. corners on it though. No, no rounded. Yeah, no. Just it's got some sharp edges on there. Now that is um, a massive boat. Oh, it's huge, isn't it? It's huge. So yeah. So apparently the no no no. no uh, we don't know how much it cost. Be a lot of say it'd be a fair bit. A lot of mushka. That's a big boat. Yeah. So um, so how many IMAX did you say are on the bridge? Uh, there is a picture of them in there. I I'll show I'll show there that. You. Look. <coughs> so you can see it from the bridge there. Show my photo. Hang on, I've got a picture of the the IMAX there because I've got I've got this front of the boat. There we go. Yeah. yeah there. there you go. So it's not bad. Apparently the yacht is christened Venus, as Eric said. The shipbuilders were each gifted an iPod shuffle. Whoopie do. Oh, God <laughs> almighty. Give them an iPhone. I know. Busted their ass for years making this thing. They, they got, a, they got an, an iPod, iPod shuffle. shuffle. <laughs> the cheapest. Why don't you just give them a, what, a bit of dirt from the Apple store? I mean, really. Yeah. <laughs> with the ship's name inscribed on the back, along oh, with a note. Give me an iPod Touch or something. Yeah. How cheap is it? Was yeah. that Scott Forstall's idea? <laughs> no wonder he was sacked. Give me, give me a free weekend on the boat, jeez. And uh, yeah, yeah, so along with a note thanking them for their hard work and craftsmanship. Features oh, a note. Did they, they got a note, not no. a gift card with a thousand bucks on it. A note. A note. Just come a little, on. A little note. It features a lightweight aluminium exterior. This is the boat, uh, measuring up to eighty meters long. Yeah, twenty-seven. That's huge. Seven twenty-seven inch IMAX. That's. Yeah, it's a nice boat. It's a beautiful boat. Like, it's a beautiful boat. Yeah, eighty meters. Eighty it's meters long. Pitch. Yeah, it's it's. You wouldn't call it a yacht. What's it? What's a yacht? This is super. Not... It's a super yacht. Yeah, it's it's, it's a, a ship. Yacht. It's a it's a it's a ship. It's crazy. It's like the it's like the, it's like the Titanic. But um, but look for those on the audio. I I I would encourage you to go and have a look at this. There's show notes, links, and stuff. Go and have a look at this beast. It's it's nice. It's very nice. Um, oh, right. nice. Well, I don't think uh, I don't think they'll uh, Mr. Forstall and the other gentleman will be spending time at the Christmas party on that boat this year. No, <laughs> he's out. No. he's out. But I don't think Jobsy no. didn't even get to ride in it, did he? I don't think it was finished. No, 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 no it wasn't no. finished. Yeah. His what wife and his kids turned up. I think that's up them up on the on the deck there that you're showing. Oh yeah, yeah. The, two, uh, the blonde haired lady. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice, it's it's a massive, Beautiful boat. massive boat. Yeah, I wonder how many in it sleeps. There's not many details. We don't know how many it sleeps. Nah. Oh, that would sleep at least 40 people, surely. Oh, yeah, so it's, it's huge. But anyway, we have to move on. What, uh, what else? Jane, did you have another story you wanted to uh, 
in part? Um, uh, yeah, a little quick one that kind of follows on from the, the from Steve Jobs. I'm not sure whether I actually included it or or not, but I can remember the details from the top of my head anyway. Um, on the 28th of October, I think it was, Rupert Murdoch sent out a tweet just um, commemorating the death of Steve Jobs. Um, he went to great lengths to sort of say that that day was. It was 12 months ago that day that um, Steve Jobs had died, and obviously everyone knows that he actually died on the 5th of October. So um, oh, subsequent Rupert. quotes, su subsequent comments were things like, gee, you know, daylight saving has made the time difference between America and Australia 22 days. And <laughs> well, this is Rupert Murdoch. He said, yeah, I saw that the other day. Uh, yeah. What's he doing, old Roops? He's losing the plot. <laughs> losing his memory. Losing the plot. Um, Eric, you've, can we have your camera back, please? Where's my camera? I don't know. I've got, oh, a, you've got your screenshot going. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Australia Post launches its digital mailbox. I don't know if you've uh, seen this. We had a story about well, how... How do we, how do we, how do we uh, use this? You sign up how for it? How do we it? use this? Sign up for it? Yeah. It's officially yeah. launched its digital mailbox. There's a link to sign up in the show notes or you just Google it. Users of the digital mailbox will be able to access their bills and account statements, make payments and use the mailbox as a digital vault to upload documents from any computer or mobile device. Companies that have signed up uh, include Telstra, AMP, Westpac, ANZ, National Bank. The encrypted mailbox will be hosted in a Telstra cloud. Australia Post recently reported an overall group profit of $281 million in 2012. Well, I only put this, it pulled this in because uh, it was interest to me as a, side, as a side note. But Australia Post... As a group, uh, profit two hundred eighty-one million in two thousand and twelve, uh, despite a loss of one hundred forty-eight million for its regulated mail business. So they must do a lot of, lot of stuff. Uh, parcels, read parcels. But is that and they're making a lot of money with um, parcels because everyone's ordering online. Yep. And so a lot of deliveries are going via Australia Post. So they're making a lot of money on parcels, and and well, that makes sense when you think yeah. about it, right? When everything's online. Everyone's sending emails, not letters, so you're going to lose money on the letter side of it. That's right. But because everyone's online, they're ordering stuff online. They're making their money. They're making it up in the parcel service. But uh, but this was the 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 uh, sort of the question we we raised the other week, though. It was if you order something from Hong Kong, Australia Post doesn't get paid anything. Like to deliver. No, it. but within Australia, within Australia. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So uh, yeah. So look, look. I ordered something the other day. You know, it came from Australia Post. Just normal. Normal post by the parcel lady uh, was ordered on Monday and it came today. So it's not too bad of a wait, you know. And that was, I'll, 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 was a, I was, oh, it's a couple of little gadgets. I've got to, I'll, I was going to talk about them next still, week. Still in, the, still in the wrapper, are they? No, nah, they've been opened. They've been opened. I'll not show you. I'll show you what they are. Hang on, stay there. It's on the bench. I can't show you the actual thing, but I'll show you the box that it come in. It's Did a you little, do, um... Did you record the unboxing? No. Nah. There's a little IP camera. There you go. Yeah, where are you put, where are you gonna put that? Oh, I just put it in the room somewhere. And it's um Oh, so you can access it from anywhere. Yeah, it, you can access it on your iPad, uh, iPhone, internet, anywhere. And it's uh, infrared, so it does night time. Um it's wireless, mm. so we need I even, I'm not even gonna ask you where you're gonna put that. Well I don't know yet. I'll f figure something out. <laughs> oh, I've got a fair idea where I reckon you'll put it. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to use that, and that's going to be great. That's going to be good. And that was a Fozcam, if you're interested. And uh, thanks to uh, PA, he put me onto those little things, and they work great. Yeah. How much? Can you, are you allowed to say how yeah, much? Hundred bucks. That's it. Delivered. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. So if I'm not sure what the website is, I forget. But if you look for Fozcam, Google it, F O S C A M. Uh, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll probably I'll try and set it up wirelessly and um, and put a like a, a public login so anyone who wants to log in just that time <laughs> the next week will be able to just put log it on, in. Just put it on a web page. Yeah, we put it on a web page. If someone goes to the web page, they can just watch whatever is on at the time. Like mm. like Leo's got the live cam that you can go and look at. Yeah, so it doesn't it doesn't destroy any bandwidth because it just goes when someone's there. So yeah. um, so that's good. That's good. Woohoo! All right. Now, oh, this is now this one here. This is the one that uh, Will sent in. Now, this was about the new mobile phone laws. I don't know if you guys have heard about those. If they did yes. extend to New South and even across yes. to the West, but are they are they nationwide or are they 
Or are they just... Well, we've got, we've got some that's come in here. They might be similar. The rules prevent drivers from using the phone. And let, this was on the ABC website, and it actually didn't mention any state-based uh, data or info. So I guess that must be pretty much all over. But I find that hard to believe. It's not normally... It's not normal yeah, that... The, the traffic laws are state based, aren't they? Yeah, so it's not yeah, normal that it's a blanketly rolled out national. No, but they probably they probably got together and and agreed on it. The rules and, prevent drivers then, from using the phone unless it's sitting in a mount unless it is sitting in a mounting fixed to the inside of the vehicle. Drivers are also banned from texting, emailing, or putting their mobile between their shoulder and ear. The fines for using a mobile phone at the moment are two hundred ninety eight dollars and three points. And if you're caught, yeah, that's across that's New South Wales as well. Okay, so, yeah, we got something similar, yeah. And if you're caught using a mobile phone in a school zone, that's upgraded to three hundred ninety-seven dollars and four demerit points. If your phone rings, find somewhere safe to pull over, park your vehicle, and then make a call. Now, I was um, Kim was listening to the radio tonight, and the, the guy on there was saying that his brother was pulled over and pinged for passing the phone in the car. I, I found that no, hard to in believe. New South Wales. So, in New South Wales, they said you're allowed to pass the phone to someone else. Yes. You're only allowed to touch it if you're passing it to someone else who can answer it for you. Yeah, yeah. But what happens if you're just moving it, passing it, like moving it from A to B, and you've got no one in the seat next to you, so therefore you can't pass it, but you've, you've moved it. So that's where it gets you moved. You've moved because it's about to fall off the seat or yeah, something. Yeah, yes, yes. And apparently this is what this guy on the radio was... Well, there's, they're, they're the grey areas that they're going to have to sort out. Mm. Grey, all right. All right, so, um, yeah, good idea. Yeah, I suppose you, yep. shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing it. Question, mm. question, because they say the, 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 the logic is if it's got a, if it's mounted, in New South Wales they say it's got to be in a mount, but the mount has to be attached to your windscreen, right? So if it's, in the, if it's a windscreen mount, you can touch the phone and answer it because the logic is you're not taking your eye off the road completely because you're looking still looking straight ahead instead of looking down here like that. Well, what about what about some other logic? And I thought. Well, no, no, no I'm not saying I agree with this or not. I'm just saying. But I thought. But it, on the other hand, my question hmm. is that. Just say, I don't. It's not mounted on the windscreen, but I've got a button on my dash, that's built into the car. That when the phone rings, I can just press the button. That's technically not touching the phone. Yeah, so that should be right because that sounds free. That should, be, should right. be right. But what my problem, yeah. well, not a problem, but what my comment would be is that I thought it was illegal to have things stuck to your windscreen. I yeah, thought, yeah, look, line. I agree right. because you put something that big in your windscreen and I can't see diddly. Yeah, you can't have fluffy dice hanging down. That's illegal. You you can't have <laughs> and stupid. <laughs> oh, when did you take yours out, Eric? <laughs> oh, when I saw yours. <laughs> So has anyone ever got has anyone got fluffy dice anymore? I remember they used to be everywhere, no, didn't no. they? But not that, since the eighties, no. But you're not allowed to put stuff on your windscreen. You can't. No. You, the only thing that goes on your windscreen is your revision mirror and your rego sticker. Yeah. So yeah. and your toll toll pass. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have rego stickers. That, that, but that's got to be behind the mirror. Oh, does it? Mm. I put mine there just so the, because it was the best spot to put it. I put it in the well. It is the best spot, but you can't see it, so it's not it's not it's not distracting you because it's behind your mirror. Yeah, it's, uh, but well, yeah. Well, Shane was just saying that they don't have rego stickers, but you guys in New South Wales are doing away with them too. We're doing away. I think it's next year. Yeah, rego stickers. Well, look, it's they're saying it's you can put it on if you want, but they're saying you don't have to. Well, so you only get it sent to you, and you either decide if you put it on or not. You pay it online. Yeah, but, okay. well, I don't know what it's like in other states, but we don't have to have, um, depending on the car, um, you don't need number plates in the front. Right. You got that that's rule? Certainly, you got that? No, that's only the case for motorbikes, I think, over here. Yeah, in, 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 in Perth, yeah. Well, we yeah, don't I know have, that there's, need... um, there's some states in America that only you only have to have plates at the back because they kind of figure that if the cops are after you, they're going to be coming from behind. Yeah, that's right. And the cameras always take pictures from behind as well. They never take... Very rarely do they take pictures from the front. Mm. So ours only work from the front. Well, that's Perth for you. <laughs> yeah. They, um, they're all the old ones. There was a big story about it a, a year or so ago about, you know, they're going to introduce it and all that kind of stuff because at the moment, you know, our motorbike riders just kind of go up to a speed camera and give it the finger and keep going kind of thing. 
<laughs> yeah, I've right. seen a few YouTubes of that, eh? Naughty, yeah, good one, naughty eh? motorcyclist. Uh, all right. So, uh, Eric, you got any more before we... Uh, uh, let me think here. What do you I got? I had one. Oh, you got, you've done your t uh, Google tablets. You've done your Nexuses. Yeah. Uh, you've done the Super Yacht. Done Venus. The Super Yacht. I had a Microsoft story, but I'm done. Oh, here we go. Apple story. Apple. The Samsung... Sorry, you're not as cool. That's the headline. Yeah, I had that. Apple yeah. versus Samsung tech saga continues, and Apple has landed the latest blow. Apple has issued a backhanded apology on its website for accusing Samsung of stealing their design for the Galaxy Tab. Actual Apple issued the apology in newspapers and on its website after losing an appeal in the UK High Court last week. But within the apology, references are made to Samsung's inferior design, which are not as cool. So mm. the this full statement is, <clears throat> uh, I'll just get to the good bit if I can find it. Uh, blah 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 blah. Well, it's on it's on the show notes, but it basically says we apologise because we lost the case, but uh, you're not as cool as us anyway. So I think that came from actually things that the judge. The judge actually said said that. that. Yeah, yeah. He said, "You lose the case." Basically, the judge said, um, you, "They didn't infringe because their product is not as cool as yours." So you lose. Yeah. You know, sort of, you lose in one sense, but you win in another, I suppose. So. All right. And I saw just one last one there I saw in your notes, Shane, that might be uh, might be interesting, just a quick one, that uh, an Australian man wins defamation case against Google over Im images published online. man who lived in Australia 42 years also claimed that a Google search for his name brought up stories about an unresolved shooting in 2004. <laughs> causing damage to his reputation, leading him to be ostracised with his migrant community. A jury found Google liable for defamation in the Victorian Supreme Court yesterday. Justice Beach, that's probably where he should have been, Justice Beach <laughs> reserved judgment on damages and expects to deliver the ruling on Monday. The man told News Limited that he was pleased by the decision. So uh, what are they saying there? How, if it's, so it's defamation... But the Google results would have just brought back something that had been published. So I don't know. Yeah. All right, I'm not sure why Google is involved, really. Is it that's, that's, that was their argument. They were saying, we're not publishers. Um, it was an algorithm that brought up the, um, that brought up the results. It's not our fault. Um, there was kind of there was two um, things that he was, the, the guy was jumping up and down about. There was the search results, and then there was other things that were linking... There was links or URLs that basically implied that, um, or in, that said that he was, or getting him confused with um, oh, that underbelly guy, Mockbelt. Oh yeah. Mock yeah, yeah. Oh, was he? Yeah, well, one of them. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, when I saw the guy's face, I, I mean, that to be honest, that was kind of the first name that kind of came to mind as well. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I don't know. Geez, is Google really responsible for that? Just because they bring, but that would have been. You know, they're not going to. They're not. Google doesn't make stuff up. It's only but there what's been put there. But um, maybe the their spider. Is there. Yeah, well, maybe the, the the little spider went to some place it shouldn't have. Who knows? Who knows how that works? But anyway, they're in the trouble. Bot. The little spider bot. All right. Anything else? We're going to go. That's it. No, I'm good. I'm done. Um, no, I've pretty much had similar stuff to what you guys had anyway. Either. Samsung unveils their Galaxy Note 2 mid-November. That's coming out mid-November. Um, Microsoft uh, wheeled out Jessica Elba and, um, at, at the Windows Phone launch, and she just basically went on about how good Windows Phone was and how good it was to swap from iTunes. And um, uh, What a liar. For a million bucks, I'll say anything. I don't reckon that's yeah. right. Oh, look, iTunes is, for me, I love it. I love it. And, and, and it'd it's be so a, easy, don't you think? Yeah, and it'd easy be easy when you've got an iPhone and iTunes. It's so simple. Be a good system that Windows needs to bring out before it, it, it will take my focus off the iTunes. I love it. Yeah, so and look, media player is not any good. No, oh, the media player is okay, but I'm I'm saying like iTunes from the point of view that uh, you, you just stick your phone in and it syncs. And I know media player oh, syncs, easy. but it's not as easy. It's harder. Yeah. It's, it's, it's and you know the other thing the iPhone does now, which I just discovered, which is a recent thing, because you know a year ago, if you were if you were listening to a podcast on iTunes on your computer, and then you went to your phone, um, you'd have to work out oh well, what was I up to, 
Yep. Um, now, if you're listening on your computer and you go to your phone, it it's automatically syncs. Yes. You know, wirelessly in the cloud. Yep. And you're up. It's up to that same place on your phone. Yep. And same with your phone. If you're listening to, you know, the Steve Jobs biography on your phone, you come home and you want to listen on your computer. It's it catches up and it's it's bookmarked on your computer. Actually, so simple. I actually forgot about that. I can listen to that now. Remember, because that's what was a, one of the big, really big bugbears I had with the Samsung. One of the oh, it one took of the many. Five years to bloody work out how to play. How yeah. to press the play button. I even because then I, then I thought okay, I bit the bullet and eventually thought I'll install Winamp. You know, because it's a similar thing to iTunes. But then every time I started the, to listen to the chap to the book where I left off, it wouldn't remember where I left off. I'd have to st- start yeah. at the start again at the chapter. And I thought, yeah. this is ridiculous. Yeah, you could forget where was I up to. Yeah. Yeah. So no, took try me, it. Took me ten minutes to get to the back to my spot, and then I was already finished what I was doing, driving or whatever. But anyway, that's it. Yeah. All right. Thanks everyone. Don't forget uh, AussieTechS.com.au forward slash hosting, and uh, hopefully we'll be back on deck. Will will be back on deck next week, and uh, show notes, Garth, they're all there, all from the pa- all from the web page. Go and have a look, check it out. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, mate. See you next week. No worries. Thanks, Shane. Thanks for coming on. No worries. See you guys next week. And lounge as always. Thank you very much. And podcast listeners, thank you also very very much. But if there's one thing you do, go and have a look at Venus. The Steve Jobs boat. It's a beautiful and piece of and uh, 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 live. Uh, what's it got? And Aussie Tech Heads. Uh, what's it? Aussie Aussie Tech Heads forward slash hosting. Hosting. That too. That's right. Go and get some hosting. It's cheap. Well, it's not cheap, but um, it's reasonable. It's, it's good. affordable. It's competitive. It's good and it's fast. It's affordable. It's Australian. It's fast. It's great. All right. Till next week. Bye for now. Bye bye. See you guys. Yeah.